Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. Thanks for joining me on this cold and gray, rainy day here on the shores of Lake Kuchiching. Hmm. So what am I going to do today? Kind of the same thing I did yesterday. Yesterday I did five capacitors all in the front end of the radio. Now we're going to go to the other end of the radio, the output uh, area of the radio where the output tube is, where you see all these old capacitors sitting here, and I'm going to change those out, and we're going to do it in some kind of supposedly logical, kind of pseudo-scientific way of going about this, to see if anything interesting shows up. So let's take a look at the schematic, and we'll look at these capacitors, and I'll talk about the one or two that uh, seem to be interesting. Okay, so on the schematic here, I, I did these capacitors yesterday. Now a lot of these, these ones here, these, these two right here, these are down in the local oscillator. So uh, that's kind of the area that was getting fiddled around with yesterday, local oscillator. And then when I tested the radio at the end of the day, I just turned it on and listened to what was coming out of it. Not a particularly effective test to see what happened to the local oscillator. But later, when we do the alignment process, if changing these capacitors changed anything down here, we will compensate during the alignment uh, process. And keeping in mind that the capacitors I took out of here, as bad as they might have looked, were actually really in pretty good shape. Okay, let's see if the same thing happens. I'm going to this end now, and I think there's five capacitors. There's a bypass capacitor here. There's this capacitor, which goes across Better not say that. I was going to say it goes across this winding, but not quite. Uh, there's these two capacitors and this one here. So let's talk, start by talking about this one. This capacitor carries all the audio from the radio into the amplifier right here. Actually, the first stage of the amplifier is a triode in here, and then on it goes. It comes through here. We're going to leave this capacitor in place right now. This is one of the ones that we're going to change. This one is also uh, conveying all the audio into the final uh, amplifier tube. And uh, this one also has an important job. This one's quite important. Uh, this guy's important too. I didn't mean to, to leave him out of the deal. Uh, if he's weak, I didn't finish here. If he's weak, then the volume will be low. If he's leaky, then some of the AVC voltage through all these resistances may appear over here on this grid, which you don't want to have happen. Um, okay, so getting back, signal coming around to here. Now, on this side of the capacitors, the plate voltage, a couple hundred volts. We certainly don't want any of that on this side. This capacitor is in the same boat. If this guy leaks DC, it's going to work its way up onto the uh, grid of this tube. It's a serious problem uh, with a radio if these blocking capacitors leak and shift the potential of the grid positive, then the tube will conduct more and more current, will run hotter and hotter, and wear out sooner and sooner. And you won't even know it necessarily. You can play this radio with a uh, hot hot output tube and not really know it. These tubes are hot anyway. You can't really tell even by touching. So. Uh, so that's that's the one, two, three, four, five capacitors I'm going to go after. First one I'm going to do is this one. I'm going to find this one, take it out, and we're going to test it right away. And the second one I'm going to do is this one here. We'll talk a little more about this resistor and whatnot. And then from there I'll probably just do all three of these all at once. So 0 0.005, let's, let's go to the radio and we'll find this one. It should be easy to find should be easy to find because it's right off the uh, center post on the volume potentiometer. Just looking for my pointing stick. Here it is. So look at the volume. So no. So the volume comes here. That's probably it there. Out through the selector switch here, which is selecting uh, FM, or I'm sorry, selecting phono or the radio. So it comes down here, 
This is just a post, just a terminal in the air, finds its way to this capacitor here, which I'll bet this terminal is grounded here. No, wait a minute, that's not right. This is this is the one that's conveying. This shouldn't be grounded. This is conveying the signal. So we'll cut this guy out and we'll we'll test him. And then we'll replace it. This is a molded capacitor, a style which I think most people would consider uh, very unreliable, 0 0.006. That's funny, it said 0 0.005 on the... Uh, I wonder if this has been replaced already. It's quite possible. 0 0.006, 0 0.005, I don't think it makes much difference. This is distorted reading this area here. Well, what happened to that? There we go. Looks melted. So it was it was bumping up against this resistor here. Now that that's a large that's a large high wattage resistor there. Sorry there I got automatic focus on and it's not helpful. Wonder what that resistor is. Could even be the uh, that's quite likely the cathode resistor. So this, this wire is going to ground, so this is a grounded terminal. Yeah, and sure enough, a wire comes around the back here, grounding out a number of terminals, including the one that the capacitor I took out is hooked up to, was hooked up to. And there's a resistor at the back. That's brown, black, blue? Blue. Okay, so I'm not sure what that is, but that's not a small one, that's a big one going to ground. Oh, so that's probably one of the grid draining. Who knows? Don't talk. Let's carry on. Let's test that capacitor. Yeah, let's go test it. Just come on right over here. So many other uh, capacitors testing good, I wouldn't be surprised if this tests good. They, they all live together after all, eh? they've been traveling through life together. 25 volts, let's try that again, pretty good, 150, 250, still opening at 250. Well, let's measure it then. It's supposed to be, it says it's a 0 0.006. Should be found on this scale here. There it is. Here's a... Uh, it's hard enough for me to read it. Zero zero one, point zero zero one, point zero zero five, point zero zero six, seven eight. So this is measuring point zero zero eight. Higher than the, uh, higher than what it's rated for. Generally, when capacitors are leaking, uh, they tend to read a little high on this. But the leak test showed no leak. The reading shows a little high. Now we're going to change it anyway, but you can see this isn't a, a, a terribly defective capacitor. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put the uh, replacement in and we'll get on to the next one, which was going to be the uh, 
cathode bypass capacitor. So totally different story there. Okay, that's done. Next objective is this capacitor and a look at this resistor, which are on pin number eight, coming off the cathode pin, pin number eight, both going to ground. And the shield, the, uh, what is that? SH, shield. Is there a shield in this tube? Let me just a sec here. Let me just take a peek at it. Where is it? Well, I, I don't know what it's talking about there when it says shield. I assume that's what that is. So this may or may not uh, exist. And there's a heater ground right there, right there too. So lots of wires connected together here on the tube. Pins one, pin two, pin eight is of interest. Okay, pin eight, pin eight, pin eight. Let's go. That was pin eight. Okay, so up here in the buried, buried, buried. Um, okay, so I think I see the key there. Okay, so that's pin. Oh my gosh, pin eight is. Ah. How am I going to see under there? I could go ahead and change these two capacitors, regardless of what they are. And in the course of doing that, you know, this is easier than I thought. These two capacitors connect to the same spot here. And look, they've been replaced. Okay, you can't look from there, but you can look. You can look from here. Let's take a look. These two guys here. If you look at the wires, you can see one of them anyway. Um, this one is a replacement and I mean it looks different than the other two made in New Jersey Bayonne, Bayonne, New Jersey that's this one here you know this is a different kind again too wow where's the lead go from? Oh, it goes in behind here Okay, <laughs> stay on focus here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to lift the the top end. No, I'm going to lift the bottom end of these two capacitors off here. Swing them out of the way. Leave them connected at the top, so I don't lose track of who's who. <gasps> Ooh, do you hear that? Look at that. The insulation just. That's what happens when you move these wires. Fooey. Um. Yeah. So I'll do what I'm do what I'm saying. Do what you're saying. There. Now we got a clear view in there. Okay, let's see what's going on. So I'm looking. Yeah, clear view. Maybe I spoke a little too soon. There we are. Now it's quite clear. Yeah, that's fantastic. Way to go. Okay. So there's the key. Where's the key? There's the key. So this is pin 8. So sure enough, there's that big resistor. Okay, and you know, does it look like it's been hot? You know, this might be normal, normal heat degradation over many, many years. And where's the capacitor? That's supposed to be there. Oh yeah, right here it is. Duh. Okay, so it's a component in the three, you know, the metal metal can, the metal can up here. It's one of those guys. Oh, sorry about my camera here. Come on, there we go. So, uh, so we're going to test this this capacitor and see if it really is twenty still, and. Uh, Hard to test an electrolytic for significant leakage, but we can do that too. And this resistor, I'm going to cut this guy out. We're going to put a new one in. And we'll test them outside the radio. That's probably the best way to go. Down here, it's just the ground down here. There's all kinds of opportunities to 
connect it to ground. And where to go? Do it. <laughs> okay, so that, that resistor has relocated itself into uh, it's adopted the cloak of invisibility. There it is, laying back there. Okay, I got it. So we'll test this guy first. Uh, it was supposed to be 470, I think it was. Was it? Was it? What was it? I don't know. <laughs> Something like 470. Pretty, really close. If it was supposed to be 470, I'm just going to take a peek here myself without putting it on the screen. 470. So it's actually in good shape. Huh. Everything coming out of this radio appears to be in good operating order. But I will put a new, a new one in there, of course. And then the bypass. So we can measure the capacitance of this big capacitor, and I can do it with leads. Uh, you don't need to worry about about uh, lead capacitance. Whoops, of course, when you're doing a capacitance check on a very, very small capacitor, the capacitance in a wire like this would throw the reading right off. But this is a really, really big capacitor. Okay, that's to ground. And then this was going to go right on the right on terminal for the capacitor. Let's bring this over here. Make sure I get the polarity right this time. Did I do it right over yonder? Yes I did. So I gotta make this is gonna be a positive terminal and it's electrolytic capacitor. It's okay. Now there's a setting here, you change the sensitivity of the instrument. To suit. Um, why is this not open all the way? Hey, wait a minute! Something's happened to my machine here. What? Uh, what? What the gives? Shouldn't be doing this. signal or something coming in on the wire here. Um, let me unplug the radio. Oh, it is unplugged. It's connected to all kinds of other stuff. Um, did I connect this wrong? I'm just double checking my connections here. I can't see how. I'll just pick a different ground point here. Okay. Ah. Never had this happen before. Something is something is putting a voltage on the radio. What what the heck is it? I got oh, got so much instrumentation hooked up to it. Strip away all that stuff. Carry on with the test anyway. Well, the capacitor is still connected into the circuit in the radio. Um, it's was. Uh, let's look on the schematic here. Just okay. So I'm trying to read the capacitance of this cut this resistor out. So this capacitor is now one leg on the chassis and the other leg is going basically nowhere. Something going on with this too? And 
Another, you know what? I, maybe I could uh, ground. I don't know how to do it. Ground the chassis of the uh, test instrument to the chassis of the. Uh, Some of the gun here. Okay, I can't find any particular reason why things are doing what they're doing, but then that's kind of typical in my shop here. Um, so I disconnected all the test equipment, made no difference. Uh, I did not disconnect it all at once. Maybe if I removed all the test equipment, maybe it's a ground, I don't know what's going on, but it's still partially closed for no good reason. But if I apply the test, watch what happens. Okay, so it shows a shorted capacitor. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, wrong setting. Try it again. Okay, so it's, so it's showing, it's, you know, just ignoring the fact that it doesn't open all the way right now. Other than that, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a what? It's not a terrible capacitor. I'm not even going to try to measure its capacitance with it behaving like this. Okay, I think it's short. The leakage test is still valid. If the capacitor was really, really bad, the radio would have no volume. Hey, this radio has low volume. So if, if, if the capacitor had no capacitance, so it wasn't doing its job, then a fair bit of the signal would be lost across this resistor, and you'd have low output. If the capacitor is shorted, you'd have a bias problem on this tube. Let's see, and if the bias, this would drop the voltage across the uh, cathode resistor, it would reduce the bias, reduced bias would increase the quiescent current through the tube and get into a heating problem again. Well, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna leave the bypass capacitor as it is. I, I, I don't have any positive reason to, to do anything about it change this uh, resistor and then I think there's a test we can do although I don't know if I want to do it on the radio right now but I think there's a way of measuring the amount of signal left across this uh, resistor okay so I'll go ahead and just all I'm basically doing is changing this resistor at this point we'll do that okay so I found a nice looking 500 ohm resistor that actually tests at 460 really what I'm looking for 470 460 10 water we'll use this so I'm just carrying on with the replacement of the capacitors up in this area and I'm on my way to doing this white one here on it it says 0 0.003 meanwhile on the schematic that capacitor is supposed to be a 0 0.007 more than double the size there so the impact of that gee I don't know but I'm going to change it and put in the uh, size that's uh, requested on the schematic so I'm also noticing I'm looking ahead and thinking ahead I'm thinking ahead I'm not really so there's all these wires here now that have come from the old transformer which are going into the tube socket here. Sorry about the focus. I, I can't control it very well when it's on automatic, but you can see all those wires snaking down in there. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to feed the new transformer wires into those positions there. So, wow. Okay, just looking ahead a little bit. Hey, Peanut. Come on in. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'll show you what I'm doing here, kitty. There we are. See, I'm working on this radio here. Okay? Using all these lights and all this equipment. See all the equipment? Well, I'm not using the equipment today. What do you think? Poor cat, he just wants to go outside. That's all he's interested in. Let me out, let me out. Okay, so I've changed out all the capacitors up here, so basically that part's done.
with a couple of old capacitors down here around the detector, I think it is. So I now have three more capacitors to check. Let's do that. Shorter leads just in an effort here to be a little more, more accurate. There we go. First one is a point zero zero six sealed. Sealotite, sealotite. Trying to convince you that the plastic shell has sealed it up nicely. 25 volts, regular capacitor, 250. Let's give it a moment to drop its charge here. It's actually on a short circuit when it's sitting like this. Okay, switch her around to read point. So it's going to be somewhere on this scale. There it is there. Doesn't open very much, does it? I'm not sure how to interpret that. Uh, point zero zero five six seven eight. So it's reading point zero eight. Maybe you know my device itself may be poorly calibrated. Let's try another one now. Go back to the voltage test. 600 volts, 0.03. This is the one I put a 0.07 in place of it. So, uh, you know, it's really... Assuming this was replaced by somebody previous, it uh, looks like they're just taking junk. I shouldn't say that. I don't even know what I meant by that. Here we go. Well, there's no junk here. 250 volts, still opening. Okay, I'll let it discharge for a moment. This is supposed to be 0 0.003. And you can see here it's measuring point, almost 0 0.5. Again, a little high. I think this machine works with a bridge inside it, so it has some uh, has some uh, capacitors inside it that it's using to, to, to derive the reading. Uh, comparatively, I believe, made in I must say Canada. There, notice I can I can see. I don't know if you can see this on camera or not because of focus on that, but. The wax is here, but there's no wax across here. It's pulled away. It's all. Doesn't look to be in the greatest of shape. Let's see what happens. This one's a replacement. This is a. This is newer than original. Twenty-five. Looks good. Oh, okay. We got a bad one finally. The eye is not opened all the way. So this one's a little leaky. Now what was this guy doing? This guy, this guy was... Uh, where did we have this leaky capacitor? So this one was where this one is now. This guy uh, goes to ground here, and up here it's hooked up to pin number pin number one, two, three, four, pin number five. So the capacitor going to pin number five was leaking. What all does that mean? Let's go take a look at the schematic here and see. Oh, peanuts. The poor guy, he's upset because it's, it's wet and gray and rainy outside. Pin five. One, two, three, four, five. It's this one. See one coming from the tone control. 
Yes, peanut. Really? <laughs> I'm going to show you my cat's face. He has a... Uh, puts a lot of expression on his face. At least I can see it. Let's see. A bit of that angry, disappointed look. Peanut. Never mind the door. Peanut. What do you want? Peanut. Peanut. What do you want? What was that? That was a silent meow. There we are. You're going to talk to me now? You know, it's raining outside. Hey, hey, hey. It's raining outside. You can't go out. Yeah, this is typical of a cat conversation, by the way. It's usually a little bit one-sided. If I make any move towards the door, let's see what happens. If I make a move towards the door... <laughs> I think we know what he wants. I'm going to go throw him in the garage. That's probably not really what he wants. Come on, Tina. Come on. outside. So I'm going to let him outside. Well, I'm going to check it out and then consider letting him outside. Okay, so I put their toy box there because uh, they don't want to go outside. Maybe they'll play with toys out of their toy box. Let's see what happens here. Hmm. occupied for a bit. Okay, well, what was I doing? Oh, I was testing this capacitor. And I was rudely interrupted. I shouldn't say rude. Cats are actually polite animals. Uh, they, they really are. You can read up on it. Uh, between themselves, they have patterns of politeness, which, are, uh, which can be spotted if you're a person and you know what to look for in their behavior. But I think that's the end of the road here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What are we doing? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, Lego. Gotcha, Lego. Um, so, what are we supposed to be doing here? Detangling my wire. Okay, I think I'm ready to test the radio again. See if I made any mistakes in it. So uh, the way this is being powered up, because the transformer is missing, is coming from this power supply up here. And uh, this meter here is this lead here. I'll be able to let me practice. All I got to do is go and touch right here. And then that meter behind my arm will show us the cathode bypass by, by, blah, 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 bias voltage if you like cathode resistor voltage that's kind of what I'm reading um, so the voltmeter ground leads there that's a ground this is on ground just making sure everything that's this is not on ground actually it doesn't matter though this one's on ground it's been a while since I turned this on I fill around with a lot of stuff everything looks good I still have a scope hooked up here. I'm going to disconnect it because I don't care about it right now. Just leave it like that. Okay, nervous or not, I shall power it up. I'll do it, of course, with the dim bulbs. Uh, better plug the radio in first. Or for sure the result will be this. No, there's no plugging in the radio. What am I doing? Day, 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 day small brain infarction just took place. Okay, so I guess 
So that should put the heaters on. 2, 1.9, 1.8. Okay, so that's going normal. That's going to settle out at 1.5. So normal there. I'll start applying B+. Plus. I have the takeoff to the SDR set to a high resistance. So it's uh, missing in action as far as the radio is concerned. There is no SDR connection because I found when I get the SDR to work, I've got the connection set in such a way that it's draining the signal out of the radio. So could still be doing that a little bit. We're ready. So I'll raise the B plus to about 175 volts. Typically that has made it make sound. Volume's up. Okay, here we go. 50, 100. 150, 175, so I'd say we got more volume. That's what I would say. So now we'll read the uh, voltage drop on the cathode resistor and uh, set this to 15 volts full scale here. Expectation is going to come up around nine or ten. I have to check in the book to find out what the what it really should be. But let's read it first. Okay, it's right here. What do we get? Seven volts. What was that output to? Was it a six F six? I think it was. Six F six. Just be sure. One moment here, 6F6. Let's see what the bias should be. 6F6. Now the bias is dependent upon the plate voltage and some other factors. This book gives a couple of uh, couple of ways. Like there's a fixed bias, cathode bias. So this is where we are, and two plate voltages, 250 and 285. So I think we're closer to 250. Well, actually, we're at 175, so we're way down. So we come down here. Cathode bias resistor value should be 410. At 250, I put in a 460. That's interesting. Okay, uh, and zero signal plate current maximum, max zero signal maximum plate. Hey, come on, where's the uh, grid number two? Grid number two, where's grid number one? Okay, we'll go down to typical operation here. Grid number one, voltage. What? Grid number one. Minus 24. With fixed bias. And running at uh, 315. Of course, cathode bias, they, they, they show this differently. How do they do it? We're, we'll look for a number that looks reasonable. 12. Maximum effective load. Sorry about this. Peak cathode bias resistor value. 320 here. Minus 24 for 315. So you're pulling with a force of 315 on the plate, and you're trying to restrict it with a countervailing bias of minus 24. So we're not up at 315. We're probably when this thing's running, probably around 2 220. Uh, wow, I don't think that's that's really enough. Um, Actually, you know, we can calculate the uh, the current passing through the tube because that's also something that's specified here. Plate dissipation, plate, 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 cathode peak, maximum signal plate current. No, I don't want that. Zero signal plate current. There it is. 38 milliamps, 34, 38, 34. So around 35 milliamps. Okay, 35 milliamps. So how much current is flowing through that? Ice cold, ice cold resistor. So, uh, quick, Jim, to your calculator. This probably won't go well. So we got a uh, 460. Let's make a 500 ohm resistor. And the voltage dropping across it is all of seven. 
So we'd say the current is uh, proportional to the voltage over the resist over the voltage over the resistance. So that's the same as 14 divided by 1,000. So it's the same as going 1, 2, 14 milliamps, way below the 34. Now, did I do that right? Let's just double check this backwards. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty sure we're looking at 14 milliamps uh, flowing through that tube under these current conditions. And that's a bit of a low, low B plus. Let's raise the B plus up in the range of where it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's going to give us a lot more volume too. I didn't think about that earlier. The low volume could just be me running the radio with a low B plus. So on you know, this meter up here, which you can't see, it says 200. It's really 175. So. I think we got to 300 and we'd be looking at 250. That's a little high. I'm going to crank it, crank my, I'm going to try to crank it up to around 200. Get this on the right spot here and get my hand out of the way. So we can see what's going to happen to this as I raise up this voltage here. There we go. So it's at 9 now. Seven nine. That's not bad. It goes up over ten. I'll take that out of there before I make a short circuit by accident. I think it's okay. I think what we got is a fairly low. We got a strong bias, gives us a low quiescent current through the tube. Uh, the difficulty with that is a very large signal being applied to the grid could drive the tube uh, into cutoff uh, one one way or another, or operate the tube in the non-linear portion of the curve because we haven't biased it in the middle and we're feeding a large signal. If you feed a small signal, it doesn't matter much. So what that would sound like is at low volumes it sounds really clear and as we turn it up, 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 we start seeing, we would start to see something like this, I believe. So the low signal would, would look like this on the scope, look nice, and the high signal would look like this. clipped off at your top or bottom because of incorrect biasing. So we should try this. Um, I did want to look at the signal at the top of the cathode resistor uh, to see to see to see if there's any uh, signal there. Oh, I can't uh, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, haven't you hooked up the antenna yet and fooled around with that? So this goes to my, this is connected to my new outdoor great big loop antenna. Big, big by my standards. Put on here. Wow, that, that's a major difference, eh? <laughs> my God. Put the ground on. Yikes. I that kind of killed it. Let's leave it off. Turn it up. Tune around. Look for any station. takes care of it, doesn't it? <laughs> Wait a minute. Turn the volume down. This leads going to a signal generator. It's on the antenna. It's probably weakening the radio. Yes. Out of there. Okay. 
Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh. Not quite clear to me why that's going completely dead like that. Okay, that's the same connection. interesting. So what I'm doing there is it's disappointing. The radio is now switched to my outdoor antenna. It's now switched to nothing. <laughs> it's, it's a better, better reception. You never know. It's my meter saying it's going to sign off. Tone control. I seem to be doing a thing. I've got my loop antenna here. I'm going to hook this antenna up instead of what's on there now. The loop antenna should provide a very strong signal into the, whoops, into the front end of this radio. Like that. Now, right, right now with one lead connected, it's similar to just a piece of wire. I connect this lead, it will then be operating as a loop. Silence is upon us, not to worry though. I have to tune the antenna. I'll give you a look at the antenna here. There we are. Let's tune them in. Hey, where are you, antenna? is a strong clear signal that I can turn the volume up and listen for that listen for this this effect let's try uh, 640 For distortion, I'll now, turn down my ended up getting stranded, recording including level a, a here. Canadian couple. Heather, do you want to you want to tell me about the couple here? Because you, you kind of casually mentioned after you found the story. Tell me a little bit about uh, this. You have a not I can say a weird, but you have a specific personal connection to one of these couples. So I'll call that uh, her the couple uh, quoted in the article. My sister-in-law, just for you know easier to throw it out there. Um, they were in Paris and they were flying home. Okay, so. Uh, what I heard with my ear was perfectly fine sound. I didn't hear any problems with it at all. So, and it was putting out pretty good volume, and we're still running a little low on the B plus. So uh, all is good, excellent. So ready to go on the next step now. The next step is this capacitor and this one right around the detector tube. Once we've done this, just two capacitors. Once those are done, 
then it's time to put the new transformer in, which is still in its delivery box waiting. So that's great. Fantastic. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, a little bit more to go.